this updated variety of fixes to the social panel, helping you get into games with friends. The new Fall Guys launcher is now available. Download it from the PlayStation Game Store. Retro Shark costume. Uh, satellite something something. Fourth, Prime Gaming. Okay. So is this the yeah satellite thing? The costume looks familiar, but I can't tell you from where. So what's our next level up? Got scuba gear. Oh yeah. I guess we should do the new show, Adapt. You can adapt to anything. Yeah. Okay. McLovin, baby. I do actually have to, I do actually have a McDonald's thing tonight. Because I did actually have McDonald's and I do actually want to talk about it. Yeah, I think that's on the list. Unless we talked about it last week, which I don't think we did. Well, let's start with a game of Fall Guys, and how you doing? McLovin. Yeah, I know, it's a movie. But also, uh, uh, you all, I'm also thinking, the way you put it, I'm, I'm loving it, is what I'm thinking of just the way you worded it that made me think of it. But yeah, no, I do get it from the movie. So we got a new Fall Guys show. I have no idea what this is. It's called Adapt. I have no and I have no idea what this is gonna be. So since the last time we played Fall Guys, the launcher updated. So that's why we're starting. I wanted to start at nine, but we're starting at nine thirty because I went to boot up the stream, and then I realized, oh, I have to download the new Fall Guys launcher. Shit. Oh my gosh. So I downloaded so I had to download the new launcher which took like 15 minutes and then then I had to make sure I still had all the things. Oh, it's a stream thing or it's a squad thing? Okay. But yeah, so yeah, that's why I'm starting late tonight is cuz I had to make sure that you know it wasn't all still it all worked. Because I was worried, like, oh, I was going to have to sign into Epic Games again, because... Yep, Fall Guys is now an Epic game. Like, Fortnite. I have... No joke, I have been considering playing Fortnite. Like, I know I've streamed Fortnite as, like, a joke before. Maybe... What? Did I do it as an April Fool's Day joke? Gosh, I don't remember. It's It's been a while. But, right, I, I've done Fall Guys before. Or, I've done uh, Fortnite before. I've played it. But my biggest problem with Fortnite was always the building. I didn't... Because that's why I liked PUBG more. Because, yeah, PUBG has its own problems. Especially, God, that Mexican map. That was just way too freaking big. But, you know, I liked PUBG more. And Fortnite, I could just, I just didn't like the building. I just didn't think it was that fun. It added way too, it just, I didn't like it. You know, th there were those people where you shoot at them, and the next second they'd have a five-story, like, castle built. And I don't, it just never, I just never cared for it. But, they've added a new mode that is completely building-free. No building. And I kind of like that. I think that's actually, that could fix a lot of my problems with the game. Because I think the core of Fortnite is still good enough. I like the idea of Battle Royale games, in theory. 
right? I liked PUBG. I haven't played it in... Uh, what year is it? I haven't played PUBG in a while, is what that was what I'm saying. But I did, when I, when it was out, I did like it. And yeah, I touched Fortnite a little bit, but never too much. But yeah, no, I, I've, I've considered it. I haven't actually done it. But I have definitely considered it. Because, you know, you got to get that number one victory royale. Yeah, Fortnite, we about to get down. Ten kills on the board right now. Just knocked out Tomato Town. I'm trying to remember how where it goes from there, and I legitimately can't. Like, I, I shouldn't even be able to get as much as I did. But, like, the fact that I'm, like, tr actively trying... Yeah, I have no idea. I legitimately... God, that meme was... There was a period for ah, a few months where that meme was everywhere. A few, not a few months, for like a month. For like four weeks. That was it. That was the meme. I have no idea what the meme right now is. Not a clue. Yeah, so I've been cons I'm like I I have no when I probably won't, because again my I don't think I have it on my, my Switch was my only console that had it, and the Switch is no longer um because I got the OLED I never re-downloaded Fortnite, so yeah I just kind of don't have access to it right now, and I'm not gonna waste time downloading it on the PS5. We are not off to a good start today. Oh my gosh, yeah. I don't- why am I stuck? Yeah, it's not going well for me right now. I just have to hope my teammates are doing better than me. One's already finished. One is right there. The second one finished. Alright, we're doing good right now. Let me see. Does this... Ah, no, I don't really like that. Okay, I'll, I'll mess around with it. I've been messing around with, like, Twitch chat and whatnot and seeing, like, how to get it to look better. It's something I've been messing around with. Are we still in this? I was not paying attention. I was missing. I was dangling around with Twitch chat. Yes, we are. Okay, good. Okay, final four. Um, I don't think there's a four-player team game. All the team games I can think. No, there is. Um, but all the team games I can think of are three players. I'm pretty sure there is though. But. Oh wow, it's just thrown us straight it's just thrown us straight into the finale. I still cannot believe I won a game of thin ice the other week. My first cause this is this is the only this was the only finale I had never won. I actually I don't know if I won the jungle one either. 
I've, I know I've gotten close, but I don't think I've actually ever won it. But I'd never won Thin Ice, and this was like Season 3. Because I don't think any of the new um, things have added up. I don't think there's been a finale added since 5. I mean, we're only in 6 right now. Which is kind of surprising when you think about it. I don't I don't know. It's definitely one of those things where between seasons, the it, development, you know, has lasted a little longer between seasons. That's definitely a thing. I do not like the position we are in. We're on the same team, dummy. Ah, oh, crap. I, th I think we're out. I don't know. They might be able to win this. I screwed that one up, though. I could have. They took... Oh, my gosh. Because, yeah, they were, they were going straight for them. We might... If they... Ugh. Yeah, I, sc I screwed that one up, though. I didn't jump off early enough. Okay, whatever. So that's just the first game of the night. And we already got some things anyways. Um, I don't think that's enough to give us a crown. Reach round two and adapt, place round race, qualify, reach the final. Okay, that gets us a level. 14 shards, first crown on the first game of the night. Not that we actually won the first game of the night, just we got a crown from it. Um, let's see, is there a win adapt? Okay, so there is a win. Qualify from a team's round, play a team round, play a survival, and... Okay, literally all of these are possible. Okay. But I guess we should get into the news. Um, for the news tonight, there are literally two stories. D nothing happened this week, or at least nothing I cared to talk about. Like, oh god, what are some shit I didn't care about? Um... Was there any shit I didn't care about? Oh, yeah, they announced they're making a new Tomb Raider game. Like, that was one of the things. They're using Unreal Engine 5. I do not care. I have not played... I've only played the first mod... Of the modern Tomb Raider trilogy, I only played the first one. And I never even beat it. It was fine, I guess, but yeah. But yeah, it's the same. I think it's the same studio that uh, did uh, the, well the previous games, but they also did Avengers. So yeah, but yeah, that's just one story. I don't care, so I didn't put it on here. The first story I actually do care about though is Metroid Dread. So I haven't actually played this yet, and I don't know if I will even. But Metroid Dread got an update that adds in a boss rush mode. You know, they had announced this back in. Uh, I think it was the last Nintendo Direct. They announced that Metroid Prime was getting two updates. I honestly don't remember what the other... It was, were they adding... There was something with difficulty modes. Oh yeah, there was a one-hit kill difficulty mode. So that way if you just took a single hit, you were out. Right? You died. Which I know is a challenge probably some people like. I do not care for it at all. But I'm sure somebody's into it. But yeah, they added that, and then they also announced that they were getting a boss rush mode. I didn't think we had a release date for it, but yeah, I just turned on Twitter or whatever earlier this week, and it was like, hey, guess what? The Metroid boss rush mode is available now, so go play that if you're interested. 
And I think there's like a just a mode where it's like, oh, you're doing the boss rush, and every time you beat a boss, you get like a, you get some more missiles, you get a little bit stronger, right? Where it like buffs you as you go. Meanwhile, there's also like a time attack mode as well. So yeah, they've added in a whole boss rush thing for people who are interested. Oh gosh, is our team down to three? Did one of our members quit? I don't know, it's weird to see a team of three on their own. But yeah, so that's... So they got a new boss rush mode. I honestly think this is cool. I, I thought it would have been cool if Metro... If, um... This new met got some sort of DLC. And there's still totally time for that. I mean, if Mario Kart 8 got DLC five years after release... On top of the DLC it had when it released a, back in, like, 2014... Or 2013. When did when did Mario Kart 8 release? I think it was 20. I think it was either 2014 or 2013. I, I kind of don't remember. I know that we used 2012. Okay, good. No, that scuba diver, that other scuba diver was part of our team. Oh god, I actually have to focus on this one. But yeah, so I think it's good. Um, I still totally think there is time to put in some Metroid Dread DLC. What would they do for DLC? I have no idea. Maybe Ridley. Because surprisingly enough, Ridley is not in uh, Metroid Dread at all. Which is very weird. Like, I know he's dead, but that surprised me. So maybe Ridley? Okay, I've got to focus here. Orange, apple, grape, cherry. Orange, apple, grape, cherry. Orange, apple, grape, cherry. Orange, grape, cherry. Orange, apple, grape, cherry. Okay, um, apple, grape, cherry, apple, grape, cherry, orange, 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 orange, yeah, okay, I was paying just enough attention to know where that was. So yeah, I feel like a Ridley DLC would be pretty cool. Like bringing in... There was nothing different about that mode. That kind of sucked. I feel like bringing in Ridley and having like a whole new sector to explore. If, make it like 15 bucks and you know, make it a pretty big sector. Add in some cool new stuff. Yeah, I'd definitely pay money for that. I don't know, I, I can't... I mean, maybe add in... What else? Did, did, didn't Hollow Knight add in a boss rush mode? With the... Uh, or was that something similar Ask. I don't know. I know Hollow Knight had DLC. And I think one... Like, one added, like, the Dreamweaver abilities and whatnot. One was the Circus Troop stuff. And I think that that's kind of what I'd want more from Metroid Dread. And then there was the Godspeed thing, which was, like, this ultimate final boss or whatever. Ooh, wow. This, this is different. That's for sure. I don't know. There's totally a way to do this. Metroid Dread DLC, but yeah, no, I know. Or, like, paid DLC. And I'd gladly pay money for it. I know the game has done well. It sold... It sold good copies, I think, anyways. And it is... It's a really good game. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Ridley. Because, like, I, I... I always bring up Metroid Other M. But, like, I think of Metroid Other M, how you have the post-DLC where you fight the Phantom thing. It's not Phantom. It's... Oh, gosh. What is that Phantom thing called? Um... Oh, my gosh. I cannot figure out how to do this. People have already finished. Okay, I'm just taking the sides. I can... I'm not good with this timing. Okay. 
But yeah. Um, so next up, again, we only kind of have two-ish news stories. And the second one is LEGO Star Wars. Uh, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga finally came out after much anticipation. I used to love the LEGO Star Wars games. The first, what, because they originally did the prequels, then they did the, then they did the original trilogy, then they did like all f six movies in one game. And I think they did, they eventually did one after like the Clone Wars or something like that. And then I think they did one after episode seven as well later, ju just episode seven. I don't know. The original Lego games were really good. Indiana Jones was really good. But, I, or at least I enjoyed Indiana Jones enough, right? The original four movies, or the, the, the original three and then the fourth one. I never played like the Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings one. Um, the only other Lego thing I ever really messed around with was uh, Lego City Undercover on the Wii U, which was actually a pretty fun game. It was like a giant like cop movie parody. I know all cops are bastards. I was a kid, okay? Cut me some slack. Um, but yeah, they parody like The Matrix and all sorts of other things. And yeah, it's actually a pretty fun game. I think it got ported to Switch at some point, and I think it's actually still pretty decent on Switch. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd recommend it enough. Um, again, all cops are bastards, but yeah, uh, this is these are Lego cops. Again, we're can I know we're can we cancel we canceled the dog from Paw Patrol, but you get my point. But yeah, no. So Lego under yeah, and then I because I didn't like. Eventually, it came to a point where I stopped liking like Lego games. As they, because they were inspired by like the movies, right? But then they started to become too much like the movies, where like in like, because one of the one of the great charms of the original Lego Star Wars games was that they didn't have any of the voice acting. So the and the game just didn't have voice acting at all. It's not that they didn't have rights for like scripts or whatever. It's that they just didn't have any voice acting whatsoever. So instead, characters had to like pantomime everything. And it's, like, in doing... It has a name. I think they're called Dead Plays. Or, so, or maybe, and maybe... No, it's not a Dead Play. It's a Dummy Play. A Dummy Play when, like, you recreate a performance of something, but without any dialogue. And there, it's, a, it's, a, it's an art form, honestly. And LEGO Star Wars just was really good at it. But as they kept making future LEGO games, they no longer had that. They just were fully voice acted or voice act clips from the movies, and it just wasn't the same, right? But luckily, the modern... Right, luckily this game, however, seemed to actually be trying to do better by that. Like, yeah, there's voice acting, but there's an entire mode that's completely silent, or were they talking, like, gibberish? Like, it's... Cl oh, we're, we're, oh, we're so close. It's clear they put more effort into this new LEGO game than, right? Because this game has been delayed for, like, five years now. But, right, that whole silent mode, they're actually, like, some of the fun dialogue stuff and, like, some of the weird stuff they actually, like, brought back. Like, it's not like, oh, we're just going to retell the story of the movie. No, we're going to we're gonna have some fun with it. Which, even when they did the voice acting, I'm pretty sure they still did, but... I don't know, this one seems to be taking all the right steps, and it seems to be having more fun with it, and i that's what I want. I don't want the game to be like the movies. I wanted them to be, you know, jokes of the movies, and people have already been catching on to like references and Easter eggs and whatnot. Like there's, um, there's a Xenoblade Chronicles reference in the game. There's a South Park reference in the game, right? Stuff like that. Like, they're cl it's clearly a little bit more lighthearted. Um... What else? The, uh, now, I have heard some problems with the game, specifically that it is pretty buggy. And, yeah, like, there are people who have already found out to, how to get, like, dupli duplicate your companion. So, basically, you can have, like, infinite companions, which is kind of funny. Because someone did, um, Order 66 with it, which is like, ah, that's neat. 
But yeah, I've heard the games are pretty buggy. I heard the Switch port is terrible, which that sucks. But yeah, no, I, th I think the game's reviewing pretty well. And yeah, it just looks like, it looks like fun, you know? It looks like it's what you want the modern LEGO games to be. Right, like this is more, like they, this game's been delayed, for like, for, like it was supposed to come out years ago. But even with all the delays and whatnot, it's clear that they put some effort into it. That it wasn't just like the laziest cash grab. That no, the delays actually did amount to something. It wasn't like, it's not perfect obviously, like, this isn't like, like, it's not cyberpunk bad, but it's not, but it's cyberpunk adjacent, I guess, from what I've heard. Again, I've heard, com like, I've heard kind of conflicting things on this, honestly. Like, but, you know, honestly, bugs can be kind of charming in their own way. I know that sounds, it's, it's when bugs are funny and not game breaking. There's, there, and another thing that I have seen that I do kind of like is that there seems to not be, like, as far as I can tell, there isn't, like, big, like, DLC for this game or anything. But there are codes. And you can enter these codes to get, like, unlock, like, new characters. And, like, there's, like, a Christmas sweater Darth Vader and a red droid. And stuff like that. Like, nor like in a modern game, you would pay real money for, like, DLC that would get you these things. But no, in this game, it's just you enter a code and they've been, like slowly putting out these codes over on Twitter and you just gotta like see the and right and then you can enter it in the game that's uh, again there might be DLC like I've heard things that there might be DLC for this game that adds like Rogue One and Solo and stuff like that and like I'd be fine with like paid story expansions but I don't want them DLC selling characters and as far as I know they're not DLC selling characters, right? Like, it's not like, oh, it's not like, oh, pay uh, a $3.99 for the um, Clone Wars character pack that adds in, like, Ahsoka and, you know, Clone Wars Obi-Wan and Anakin, right? Stuff like that. As far as I know, they're not doing that. I could be totally wrong, and if I'm wrong, then, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. But as far as I can tell, they're not doing that. I mean, I bet there is some sort of, like, DLC. Like, there is a deluxe edition of the game, so I'm sure there's some bullshit. Again, the worse things get, the more forgiving people are. Right? Because people, you right, on-disc DLC was considered the worst thing imaginable, and then games started putting in microtransactions, and then that became the worst thing. And then on-disc DLC was considered fine. And then games started doing loot boxes, and all of a sudden microtransactions were fine, as long as they weren't loot boxes. And now things are only going to get worse to the point where it's like, oh no, microtransactions are fine, or loot boxes are fine, as long as it's not whatever the next worst thing is. Of course, some people still will totally give loot boxes um, and pay to win mechanics, uh, free passes, Pokemon Unite pay to win mechanics right you can literally pay money to be better at the game and people are fine with that because it's pokemon you know oh come on oh come on no God damn it, I could have been in like a second. And even, God, I finished in what, eighth? Yeah, so you clearly can't bounce off the spike. You need to get past it. But yeah, so no, I'm, I'm actually told, I probably won't pick up this LEGO game anytime soon. It's got like right not this ain't like Elden Ring where it's like oh I want to beat this other game first. It's just I don't have time right now and there's other games I'd rather play. Just like straight up like there are other things that I'm more that I'm more interested in playing right now. Which I guess you know let's just get, uh, and those are our two news stories tonight. There just not much happened. I mean yeah there were other things but nothing I cared about.
I mean, what else? Any anything else happen? Oh, um. Yeah, you know, let's not talk about that. Actually, we could, but nah. Let's just go right into Wibby. So with Wibby, I will say, I have not been playing any video games straight up. Like I've been, I've been meaning to play. Uh, Tunic all week now. I downloaded it because Tunic is on Xbox Game Pass, and I downloaded it, and I've just been sitting on it all week. I've been wanting to. It's just I have not had the time. I've been busy. I've been so freaking tired. I've got pro right like college is picking up for this last month, and so I am so busy. And yeah, I just have not had time to play videos games at all. I did do some other stuff, but nope. No time for videos games. So I did not get around to playing Tunic. I haven't played Dark Souls still. Yeah, I don't know when that's going to happen, if ever. I've just been busy, man. Um, Kirby, um, will we be back with Kirby this week? Uh, will, will I play, will we stream Kirby tomorrow? Maybe? I don't know. I kind of... I have kind of wanted to replay Star Allies. Maybe it's just because it's right there. I know I could replay Robobot. But I don't know. Just maybe it's because the Switch is right there set up. I'm like, oh, I should play Star Allies again. Because I'm one of the people who liked Star Allies. I gave it a... I think I gave it a solid... I reviewed it back in the day. I think I gave it a solid, like, 8 out of 10. Or whatever. Or whatever my review score was back then. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I've been thinking about that, but nope, I did not get to any video games. I do have some movies to talk about, but there's two other things I want to get to before I get to the movies. The first one is, so I mentioned, right, I made the joke, the thing about McDonald's earlier, and I did go to Macca's, I went to McDonald's, because they brought back the Szechuan sauce. I don't think I talked about, I do not think I talked about this last week. I think I meant to, because I had it, like, April 1st. And I think I was going to talk about it, but then I just got completely sidetracked and compl or completely forgot because I didn't write it down. Unless I did talk about it, in which case, yeah, we're talking about it again anyways. But yeah, so they brought back the Szechuan sauce from McDon uh, to McDonald's. The last time, that, the last two times, they brought, this is their third time bringing it back. The last two times they have brought it back, I was unable to get it. The first time, nope, didn't get it. Second time, same thing. Didn't get it. This time, easily, they easily made enough that I was able to get some Szechuan sauce. And I have this to say about it. If you, um, Benjing with Babish made, did like a homemade recipe for Szechuan sauce, right? Like how you could make it at home. He did two. If you, if you, if you watch those two videos, Specifically the second one, the the remake, where because he did it the first time, and he was like, "Oh, I've gotten the official, I've gotten to actually a bit of the official right sauce from Chef Mike," and so now he was gonna like actively recreate it. If you've watched that video and you recreate that recipe, that is it perfectly. He nailed it. Like seriously, I know he had the like all the the ingredients list. But he nailed it one for one. Like, holy shit. Because, like, I, I, cause I, cause when I did a Rick and Morty D&D thing a while ago, I made some homemade Szechuan sauce. We talked about it at the time. And then, yeah, I actually tried it. And so I've actually gotten some. And my first thought was, like, yep, I nailed it. It's the same thing. So, yeah, if you want the recipe for this stuff, you could, if you like it, the recipe is totally out there. And it makes it perfectly. So yeah, that's totally available for you. Um, I really liked it, right? I really liked it when I homemade it. And now that I've had it again, yeah, I still really like it. It's 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 a very like I, for some reason I remember there being like a plum element when it was a when like the Rick and Morty episode came out. I remember people saying it was like a plum flavored dipping sauce. No, it's just, it's it's a very salty dipping sauce. I mean, it uses soy sauce, it uses Marmite, right? But it, I really like it. It's got a very distinct flavor that I really enjoy. 
And this isn't me like Rick and Morty fanboy. Like I do genuinely like it. I don't know if I'd get it. I'm a when it, I don't really get nugs all that often at Macca's, but when I do, I like I get like a sweet and sour sauce. That's what I prefer. Like I'm not a buffalo guy. I'm not. I don't do barbecue. I'm just a straight up, um, but uh, straight up sweet and sour. And I'd probably still like if I had a choice, I'd probably get like. Let's say I got like a 20 piece, which is what, three sauce. I'd probably get two sweet and sour in one of these. Because I do te de definitely think that you can overdo it with this. But I still do like it. I do still think it's a good sauce. And yeah, so I, fi so I, got so I finally got to try the official thing. Just to say that the homemade version, it's the exact same thing. And I still, I still, I'm pretty sure I have all the ingredients to make the homemade version still. I know I still have the Marmite. That's for damn sure. Might be out of sesame oil. And yeah, now that I think about it. Because I think I used the last up recently. For some in some ramen. I think. I kinda don't remember. But yeah. So yeah, that's one thing. Um I haven't I don't think I've tried any other weird food since then. We talked about Pepsi Nitro, we talked about Coke Starlight. They announced a Coke Bite, like Pixel, or, yeah, I think it's like Bite as in like Pixel Bite, like like Computer Pixels, or like Mega Bite. And that's just, uh, I don't know what to expect from that one. I still stand by Coke Starlight, I know people like to say it's like cotton candy or something like that. It's totally jelly beans, I still stand by that. But I have no idea what to expect from Bite. I don't even know when that comes out. And I think it's only like Diet Coke. I think it, it's it's only a Diet Coke flavor. But yeah, I don't think I've tried anything else weird since then. I don't think anyone else put out any weird sodas or any weird foods. Yeah, I don't think Taco Bell's still doing their nacho fries. So, yeah. Yeah, I really think that's it. I did find a re I did see a recipe um, for cosmic brownies the other day though, like homemade cosmic brownies, and I was like, Shh, ew, I should make I should do homemade cosmic brownies. Mm, that that would probably be really good. So I'm thinking I I might do that sometime in like the next again if I have the time, I would love to do that sometime in like the next week or two. Yeah, um, and so the other thing I want to talk about that, because again, still haven't played any videos games, is, um, board games. So, I, the one board game I've played in the past few weeks is, um, Binding of Isaac, Four Souls. I got together with my board game group, and it was like, because we had only ever done Binding of Isaac, Four Souls, like, once when it came out. Other than that, it's only ever been, like, two of us. Only two of us play it. The rest of the group doesn't really. But I was like, you know what? Let's try again. Let's do it. So, yeah, we do. And we had fun. Like, it went kind of cra- I got screwed over in the first game. We did two games. I got screwed over in the first game. I could not roll the dice to save my life. I, wa I wasn't able to get any items. It just was not going well for me. Like, holy crap. I, nope, first game wasn't going good for me. And so the other the other person who normally plays it with me won, right? He, the, he won. Second game went a lot better. I was able to win it in three turns. I had way better luck on the second round. And I was able, I got uh, Mom's Shovel. Or it's, I, maybe it's not called Mom's Shovel. Maybe it is Mom's Shovel. I don't, it's, it's a shovel item that allows you to steal a soul from another player. So, in like, I was able, on my first turn, kill a soul. Second turn, um, kill a soul, right? I was able to basically kill a soul each turn, and then I was able to use the, the shovel to steal a third soul. So, I was able to steal a soul from somebody else who killed one. And yeah, so I was able to win in three, tur in three turns. So, that went very quick. Yeah, that was the two games. The first game took, like, 
I like an hour ish, maybe a little less than that, but it took a while. Second game was over in like 15 minutes. <laughs> but it, it's it's a real. I'm so excited for the the new version that comes out. Um, I should have gone on the upper path. That path seems really cool. Yeah, I'm so excited for the new the expansion. Uh, is, is it called Requiem? It might be called Requiem. That comes out in um, I think June is their projected release date at the moment. That just seems really cool. It's it, it basically doubles the amount of characters and monster. I don't know if it doubles the monsters, but I'm pretty. I know it doubles the characters for a fact. It adds in just so much new stuff. And that's going to be huge. But yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking about it and I was like, yeah, I should, re I should, we should play Four Souls again. So yeah, that's what we did. I, th I think they like, it definitely, I think it went better than the first time we did it. All those years ago. That's for sure. This is... <laughs> this level is so fascinating. Yeah, they've really changed this one a lot. <laughs> yeah, other... So, bo other than that, board game-wise, I've just been picking up stuff recently. A lot of stuff has gone on sale. So I've just been scooping games up. With the plant right to eventually play i've mostly been getting a bunch of like big popular stuff right because a lot of them have been going on sale recently so like um i think i talked about i know i talked about getting scythe right i've been hearing a lot of great things about scythe so i finally picked that up Th this that was back in like october nah maybe november -ish. i don't know it's been a while but uh seven wonders went on sale recently and that's been that's another one of those really popular ones. I, I think Duels is more popular, but I wanted to pick up the original first. So yeah, I, I picked up Seven Wonders, and then I picked up Wingspan as well, which is another really popular one that I just didn't have. And um. I think both of these paths are safe. Oh no, just the one. Yeah, so I got I have Scythe, I have Wingspan, I have Seven Wonders, all these big popular games I've been picking up. I've been keeping my eye out for uh, Vita Culture to go on sale. I don't think it has yet. But yeah, I've just been picking up all these big ones. Um, on the smaller scale, I picked up uh, Micro Macro City. And now, admittedly, this all happened over the past, like, month. Right? This has been, like, I, I just, I forgot to talk about this last week. But yeah, like, over the past month, I've been, I picked up uh, Seven Wonders, Micro Macro City, and Wingspan just came in, um... The other day, it I just got Wingspan. I haven't played any of them yet, obviously. I know they're all like normally what we do is very like we do very like lighthearted stuff. Like, uh, did I talk about doing one night ultimate super villain? I think I did at some point and during Animal Crossing, right? Like, that's normal. Like, one night ultimate werewolf is the style of game we play. Like, the more complicated stuff, like Scythe, now nah, we haven't even touched. So, like, I think Micro Macro City will go over good with them. Because that's more of, like, a cooperative thing. But, like, se definitely Scythe, Seven Wonders, and Wingspan. I've got more of an uphill battle with. I actually, even though I'm very curious about Scythe, I'd probably actually start with probably Wingspan. Yeah, I'd probably start there. Yeah, I, I've just, I've got a lot of good stuff. Right, I... 
I've been trying. I like. I know I don't have a collection like nearly as crazy as like some people do, but as like an amateurist, I've, I've been try. I've been trying to get the good stuff. Did they talk about playing Red Dragon in as well? Did that? I think that happened after Animal Crossing. Yeah, I finally. I've been meaning to play Red Dragon in for a while now. It had been like, like I got Red Dragon in in December, and it's just kind of been sitting there since then. I finally got around to playing Red Dragon in, um, probably like two, three weeks ago, and it went over okay. You know, it was definitely one of those things where, like, at the start of the night, everyone was like, hmm, but then by the end of the night, it was like, oh, okay, we get it now. They definitely thought of it more as, like, a drinking game than anything else, which is probably my fault. But yeah, so I've enjoyed that. Yeah, Red, Red Dragon Inn was fun. It's definitely, like, I definitely bet on, like, the next playthrough, it's going to go over a lot better. That's for sure. But yeah, I've, I've had some good fun with board games, man. They're still, they're nothing more than a hobby to me, but gosh dang do I enjoy them. We have all taken... We were all being so um, aggressive a minute ago. And now we're all just kind of slowly going through. That's what happens sometimes. We'll see how this all turns out. Oh god, I'm the last member of my team. I think I kind of got to get them out right there. Oh, they've got way more space than I do. Yeah, no, they had they had way more. I had to play aggressive to stop them from moving, but no, they they definitely Aww. have the better spot. Mm -hmm. I've just it, I keep we keep I hate that the only ending round seems to be thin ice, because I'm not good at like like I said I've been playing this game for how long now and I've only ever won thin ice once. I would like some different ending rounds, you know? That'd be nice. I think we've literally done ba basically everything else in this Adapt Challenge. It's going pretty well. I don't know, I haven't actually checked. So our next story, or the next part is, I, I, I said I had some movies to talk about. I've seen two movies. Not have I seen any TV? No, I haven't seen any anime. No, but I saw two movies. I went and saw Sonic the Hedgehog. I went to the Wednesday night premiere because you know movies don't movie thir movies used to do like midnight Thursday night, and then they started doing Thursday night premieres earlier and earlier. And now I'm pretty sure I could like go get tickets for the new Doctor Strange movie at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, right? But, um, now, and now some movies are getting Wednesday premieres as a result of that. So I went and saw Sonic on Wednesday, and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So I did, on Tuesday, I rewatched the first Sonic movie. I still enjoy it. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not high-class art or anything. It's a buddy road trip movie with John Marston, who, you know, also did the other buddy road trip CGI animated character movie, Hop, that literally nobody has thought about other than to bring up that John Marston is in it alongside Fred doing Sonic. Because Hop was a 
not good movie. Even though, again, I guess it is technically comparable to Sonic, but they just, I don't know, there's, the, the thing that I think makes Sonic better than Hawk is that even people who hate Sonic, right, they don't like any of the games, right, you know, people like, um, the Ego's Raptor will admit that Sonic is a good character. Like, yeah, his games may not be great. Most of them are bad. There's only, like, six good ones. Seven, maybe. But even so, Sonic persists... Right? Like, even just, like, having, like, three bad games, especially in a row, is enough to kill off a character forever. If you're a Nintendo, literally zero bad games in a row is enough to kill off a character. Looking at you, F-Zero, Elite Beat Agents... Elite Beat Agents was only, what, a single game? Rhythm Heaven, Punch-Out, other stuff I'm forgetting right now. Right, Nintendo has killed off series that have nothing but good games in them. Sonic has had a string of just terrible games, but it still persists because Sonic is a good character. So a lot, so some of what I enjoy about the Sonic movie is that Sonic's a good character. And he's way more interesting than that. Just a generic rabbit. Yeah, other than that, uh, Jim Carrey is giving probably his most Jim Carrey performance in like 15 years. I mean, I guess Dumb and Dumber 2 existed, but who gave a shit about it? But right, Jim Carrey's giving a big Jim Carrey performance. Really living it up. And I like that. That's fun. It, it, there are some points where I think it's like a little too much. But, like, probably a good, like, 80% of the time. No, I'm really enjoying it. His assistant, uh, Agent Stone. I like, re-watching the movie, I'm like, my gosh, Agent Stone has to have a humiliation fetish. That is the only reasonable explanation as to why he puts up with this. He's got a humiliation fetish. And the second movie, totally... Not, well, I'm not going to say it agrees with that. It definitely goes more into, like, yeah, there is something between them. Again, I'm trying to stay light on spoilers here, but, yeah, no, the, the movie's totally, the second movie totally acknowledges it. But, yeah, there, his, I think agents, right, those two have a very good dynamic. Uh, they're, in, right, Jim Carrey's a lot of fun, he, and so he's given it his all. I like the, the wife, I, I like, because they don't, like... They're just a good, healthy relationship. Like, after Marsden shows up after destroying the car, they don't get into, like, this big argument or anything. They even comment on how weird it is. But I like that. I like that he doesn't have, like, this big argument with his wife. It's just kind of a healthy relationship. I think that's actually, that actually works really well, and because of its uncommonness, it's kind of refreshing. The sister-in-law, on the other hand is hilarious oh my god almost everything that came out of the her mouth i was laughing at like and they they knew it because she gets a slightly bigger role in the sequel so like they knew the si kind of again the humans this is gonna be good news for some people like remember how it was like one of my problems with like godzilla 2014 and king of monsters and the other Godzilla one, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. The biggest problem with those movies is always the human characters. The human characters just aren't as interesting as the monsters. And right, and they scale, they tend to, every movie they scale it back a little more, right? Humans are in the movie a little bit less in each one. But they never fully get rid of the humans. They never stop them from, like, Godzilla is not the main character of his own movie. And I feel like they really should, like, do that. I mean, Kong kind of was in Godzilla vs. Kong. So, again, we're getting closer. Sonic, so the Sonic movie, however, the humans are in it about as much as, like, Jerry and Beth are in a B-plot in an episode of Rick and Morty. So, like, they're still in it, but they're clearly the B-plot of the movie. The movie knows that it can be carried by Sonic and Tails. And it fully embraces that. So yeah, like the human, like, so what I was getting at is, yeah, the humans are in this less, but they do give a bigger role to the sister because she's fucking hilarious. 
and she's really funny in the first movie. Um, what else about the first movie? Sonic, you know, he's a kid. He's a kid who's just, you know, happy to be doing fun kid stuff. The movie totally plays into that, that he's just a kid, and the sequel fully acknowledges that. And yeah, it actually, I think, works well enough. I know we have, there's a big controversy with voice actors, but, um, right, and how, like, voice actors should have more prominent roles. Oh, God, we still, ugh. We, ha we had, like, two people there at the end, and we still got out. Uh, Ben Schwartz, I think, does a fine job. Like, because, you know, I know he's an actor, but as he told uh, Larry King, he's also just on DuckTales, right? Like, yeah, he's the voice of Dewey Duck. And, like, I, I now that I've, like, rewatched DuckTales recently, that's, like, the first thing I heard. Not any of his other stuff, but no, whenever I think of Ben Schwartz, I, the first thing I think of is now Dewey Duck. The second thing I think of is the Jake and Amir contest videos. Or, not Jake and Amir, they were just Amir, but, you know, those videos. But yeah, so I think the movie is fine. It's got its good, it's got its fun moments. Everybody loved the Quicksilver scene in X-Men Days of Futures Past, or, yeah, was it Days of Futures Past? And right, and like, I remember people being so disappointed at the MCU for not doing a Quicksilver scene. Sonic movie has two. And it's like fully aware that it like it had to do the Quicksilver scene, but the sequel doesn't have one. Nope, the sequel didn't. Cause while they do rehash some of the stuff from the first Sonic movie in the sequel, they don't rehash everything. They don't need a right. The the Quicksilver scene is there because it's cool. The sequel didn't need one. Instead, we get a dance battle. And yeah, I mean technically, I guess the first movie kind of had one, kind of not really. But, like, that's what replaces it instead. And you know what? It's good. Variety is the spice of life. It it does, in some ways, it does remind me of, like, you know how, like, movies have, like, dance scenes at the end, in, like, the end credits? Like, you know you know how, like, bad animated cartoon movies end with, like, a dance scene? Except for my Lego Batman. I know Lego Batman ends with a dance scene at the end, but that movie's really good and it totally earns it. But, yeah, no, this movie has the dance scene in the middle. But it, I'm, I'm letting them get away with it because they're using Uptown Funk. And Uptown Funk is like a really good song, so I'm, I'll let them get away with it. You, you get a, you get a pass so Sonic too, but you're on thin ice. But yeah, so I really enjoy the first one. Second one, I do, I do think it's not as funny as the first. Definitely, like, like because the, you know they scaled back the sister-in-law, and they scaled back right. That kind of takes away some of the comedy. Eggman has a slight. It feels like he's in the movie less. Like, that might not be true. He might be just as equal. But I definitely felt like Eggman, like Jim Carrey definitely wasn't as funny as he was in the first one. But I also don't think... Like, I think the first movie definitely does can overuse him. This one I don't feel like does. I never felt like they went too far with Jim Carrey in the second one. But yeah, the main focus is Sonic and Tails versus um, Robotnik, who has been able to get back to Earth... And he has teamed up with Knuckles. And they're on a quest to find the Master Emerald. It is now... I, I said this, I don't know, a few weeks ago. Maybe even last week. That if you watch the trailers for this movie, you kind of saw the movie. And that's true. But I still think this is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's definitely... The, the comedy is a little more toned down in this one. But as a result, it's more about, like, you know... Like, the first one was like a buddy road trip movie. This one is a buddy adventure movie, right? Where they're going around the globe, even though they really don't go around the globe that much. Like, they go to, like, three places total. But I think it works still. And part of the reason I think people are going to like this more is because whereas before it was human John Marston and um, Sonic, this time it's Sonic and Tails. Meanwhile, John Marston, the wife, and the sister-in-law are at the sister-in-law's wedding. And they're getting married. Or she and she's getting married, and that's ki that's their little Jerry and Beth B story. That that really only they have like one part near it, probably like two thirds of the way into the movie. They get like the resolution to their B story, and that's kind of it. They don't show up for the first like they they show up like here and there for the first two thirds, and they're technically in the end. But yeah, no, they're they're definitely much more subdued this time around. And for and like I said, as someone who thought Godzilla 
had too much human in it. Yeah, no, this movie has definitely learned that lesson. I totally think a third one could get away with zero human. I totally think that. But yeah, no, the characters a lot. Of, again, Sonic is a strong character. Tails is a good character. And getting the, the voice actress is real. Like, she's so good at what she does. She totally delivers, right? I feel like they there's good in finding a balance here. Like, again, I think of Ben Schwartz as a voice actor. So, like, I'm fine with him being there. But, right, getting the voice actress for Tails is really good. Meanwhile, Il Idris Alba, I think, is one of the greatest actors of our day, right? He's so good at what he does that I have no... Pr that him as Knuckles, I, I'm fine with it. And I think he does a really good job. I really like the Knuckles performance. I think he's kind of, he's funny, right? Like there's, a, there's some really good comedy bits in there from Knuckles. Okay, I actually do have to pay attention to this one. Uh, I think it's this one. Was I standing on a grape? Oh, I was, okay. Okay, give me a second, I have to pay attention to this. Cherry, grape, something. Cherry, grape, orange, apple. Banana, ch cherry, cherry, something. Cherry, grape, orange, apple. Cherry, grape, orange, apple. Cherry, grape, orange, apple. Cherry, grape, orange, apple. Uh, watermelon was over here? <laughs> I actually did kind of know where that was, but it was close. Yeah, I think Knuckles does a good job. Um, like I said, they bring back Agent Stone, and they definitely lean in more that their relationship is more than just one of, like, um, boss and henchmen. And, and I'm not, I'm told, I ship it. That's what I'll say. I 100% ship it. I know this is totally going to be a thing where, like, somebody's going to see this and be like, Oh, no, there's nothing romantic between them. They're just really good friends, right? Sappho and her friend. What's the male Sappho and her friend? Achilles and his buddy, I guess? That, yeah, sure, let's go with that. Achilles and his buddy, right? I know some people are going to just interpret it like that. No, there's totally... He's, he's totally gay, and he loves Eggman. And I really like that. Honestly, I think you, those those were some good bits. I, I just, I don't know. There's just something about their dynamic. And throwing Knuckles into that as not even really like a straight man. Knuckles is like, he's got his own brand of weirdness to add to things. It's just real good fun. Um, every There's a bunch of references that I don't want. That like, you know, I know some people hate references in movies because they don't do anything with them. But, I, I don't know. Like, I think there's a good way to do references and there's a bad way to do references. Ah, shit. Yeah, I think there's a good way to do references and there's a bad way. I think this is a good way. Because they're, they're never, like... Like, I don't really think at any point the movie ever, like, stops, here's a reference, pause. I mean, I know the movie does, like, stop, reference. But, to be fair, it is something that is set up. Or, like, sometimes it's, like, a background gag. Like, in the trailer, Tom's phone rings, and it's the Sonic music. And it's like, oh, that's neat. But, right, and, and there's a few other things where, like, that, where, um... Uh, again, it's kind of in the trailers. The, um, henchman, right? He, after Eggman disappears, he opens up a coffee shop in Green Hill Zone to spy on Sonic. Right, so he's got a coffee shop. And the coffee shop is named Mean Bean. Right? Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It's stuff like that. Like, I don't even think they ever even say Mean Bean. It's just the sign in the coffee shop. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff like that. But yeah, no, I had a really good I had a really good time with it. I like you know, I want them to make another one. They do leave they do set up for a sequel. But even if, like, because right now, movies really aren't succeeding at the box office. Like, the only things that are really doing well are comic book movies like No Way Home and The Batman. I feel like everything else has more or less failed. 
which does kind of suck. I, mean, I, I think right now the numbers are 60 million open opening day, which I think is decent. I think 60 million opening day is a pretty decent opening day. Like I know Batman just broke uh, 70 or 700 million, but that's like lifetime, right? Opening day, that, that doesn't seem bad. So I hope this does well and I hope they do do a sequel. But even if they didn't, I actually do feel like this one ends on a good note. Again, being being vague-ish here. Again, the whole movie's in the trailers, more more or less. I do feel like this one ends on a solid enough note where if like, let's say it did hypothetically fail at the box office, I would be like, you know, I would have loved another one, but eh. And yeah, you know, and I'm glad it got a sequel and I, I'm, I hope it gets another one. Cause I said the, when the first one came out, I was like, oh, yeah, I enjoyed this enough. I'd watch another one. Hopefully they iron out a few of the kinks. And I totally think they did. Like, I think, I know, I know, right? Fuck Rotten Tomatoes and everything. The, again, the tomato meter is not how good a movie is. Just the chance of you enjoying the movie. And the first Sonic movie has a 60. The sequel has a 60. What that means is not that it's 60% good. It's just that there's a 60% chance you will like the movie. Like, that's what the tomato meter means. But I do definitely, like, these, I think both these movies have the same score. No, I think the sequel has definitely fixed things. And as people have pointed out, when your biggest problem with the movie is that there isn't enough human characters, then that's not a problem. Because it's very clear that a big portion of Hollywood treats animation as kid stuff. The Oscars happened, that was literally the speech they gave, was that, oh, animation is kid stuff. It's not kid stuff. Right, and, well, yeah. Okay, yes, this specifically is kid stuff. But that does not make it, like, like when I went and saw this movie, a good, probably third of the audience was kids. And you know what? That's fine. Like, I'm actually really happy that kids are going to this and really enjoying it. Because the, the kids in the audience that were there, you know, these kids have probably been cooped up in quarantine for, like, two years now. They had a blast. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they had so much fun. <laughs> one of them there's a there's like there's a jump scare on the movie and the one sitting next to me just shrieked in terror when the jump scare happened. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, no. So I you know, again, animation needs to get more respect. It, they can totally do a sequel where it's entire get rid of the uh, John Marsden and whatever and just Sonic and Knuckles and Tails versus whatever the threat's gonna be because well you know I'd love for Jim Carrey to come back again you know I'm gonna put up the, I'm actually gonna put up the spoiler thing for this part spoilers so spoilers for Sonic 2 so while I would love for Jim Carrey to come back in a sequel obviously Jim Carrey did recently announce that he is probably going to be retiring from acting and yeah, you know what? If he retires and decides not, because it was actually real kind of a surprise that Jim Carrey came back and did a sequel. Because normally he doesn't. Like honestly, the only Jim Carrey sequel I can think of is Dumb and Dumber 2. And that's like 20, 20, 30 years after the original. So it was kind of surprising he came back and did another one. It'd be cool if he came back and did a third one, right? Wrapped up the trilogy. But if he doesn't, he doesn't, right? That's That's fine as well. Because I think what they should do. So at the end of the movie, right, Jim Carrey is in his giant robot. They, they recreate the final boss of Sonic 2. He's in his giant robot. Sonic supersonics and destroys it. But then, right, so he's he basically, right, and they say at the end, like, oh, they didn't find his body. So who knows what happened to him. I'm actually going to have to pause this conversation real quick because I, I need to focus. I need to... F oh God, this... I hate this freaking... That's the one thing that sucks about this one minigame is that I need to focus on it. Cherry something something. Um, apple, banana, cherry... Apple, banana, cherry, watermelon. 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 Apple, banana, cherry, Okay, um... 
Orange, watermelon, grape, banana. 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 Orange, grape, banana. Cherry. Um, I'm gonna, everyone's coming here, so I'm gonna assume it's here. <laughs> How, yeah, honestly, wow, I'm surprised nobody fell off. So, um, like, so yeah, at the end of the movie, the robot gets destroyed. Eggman, you know, seemingly dies, but at the end they admit that they haven't found the body. However, we know that Agent Stone survived, because he's also in the Big Mac, and he survives from it, so it's totally left up open that Eggman could survive. But if Jim Carrey is retiring from acting, they should make Agent Stone the new antagonist. Do you remember the Sonic Sat A... Really? Again? Remember Sonic Sat A.M.? If you remember Sonic Sat AM, the show ends with Eggman getting defeated, and then Eggman's henchman becomes the new antagonist. And I think they hint at Shadow the Hedgehog coming, but that's it. The show got cancelled after that, so we never saw what happened. I think the movie should just pick up where it left off where that show leaves off and make Stone write the, the new Eggman style antagonist, and he's now working with Shadow the Hedgehog. Because the other thing that happens at the end of the movie is they hint that Shadow the Hedgehog was created 50 years ago. So yeah, that's also set up in this movie. That Shadow the Hedgehog totally exists. Because I know, right, the, the next Sonic movie would obviously lead towards Metal Sonic. And I love Metal Sonic. I would love to see him in this. But I f they're going to go Shadow the Hedgehog. Maybe do both? Orange apple banana, orange apple banana. I have no freaking idea. And of course one of our teammates is out. Apple, banana, grape, apple, banana, grape, watermelon, 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 banana, grape, watermelon. Great. Uh, one one good fruit hit could have taken out. And my teammate dies at the last set. Uh, whatever, we were already out. God, I can't believe it gave, it gave us logic two times in a row. But yeah, so I think that's where they should go with the next Sonic movie. Right? Makes if you're if Jim Carrey really is retiring from acting, which you know what? He's more than earned it. Make Stone the new antagonist. Because Sonic doesn't really have any other antagonists. I mean, there's... Because mo most of the other ones I can think of are controlled by Eggman. Right? The Sinister Six. Um, the Time Demon thing. Right? The thing that eats time from Sonic... Um, generations. The Ruby Emerald thing. I'm pretty sure that's also con from Sonic Forces. That's controlled by Eggman, right? Every Basically, every remaining villain is controlled by Eggman. I think the only exception is, that I can think of anyways is Chaos. So maybe they do Chaos next, right? And make Chaos like its own antagonist. And, you know, I would lean more into the horror roots, honestly. But, yeah, that's just my first, like, idea. Because, yeah, if Jim Carrey's not coming back, that's how I would do it. But Eggman is... Either that or, you know, you just recast Jim Carrey, which is also fine, I guess. But I, I don't know. I feel like just, ma right, doing that... S pro finishing up on the promise of Sonic Sat AM would be really neat, right? Just, like, fully going into that. But, yeah, that's just my idea for if they're going to do another one. I hope they do. I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed the first one. I do definitely think the sequel is better than the first one. Like, I, yeah, it fixes some of the problems. It's it's fun. And yeah, but, you know, it's funny. I made fun of The Lion King for being like an... For right, it being this... Oh, it's the live-action Lion King. But the movie is entirely just CGI animated. But yeah, yeah, if they were to do another Sonic, I'd have no problem with it being a live... It's a live-action Sonic movie... But there are no humans, right? Now, of course, if they are doing Shadow the Hedgehog, they better get um, Maria in it. Her name's Maria, right? 
Yeah. And, oh god, how do you do, um, is it Eggman's father, his grandfather, gosh, I don't remember anymore, who creates Shadow, right? How do you do that? <laughs> who do you get to play, um, yeah, Jim Carrey's grandfather. Actually, they could have a lot of fun with that if they really wanted. We're so out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, you definitely gotta get, like, even though I'm right saying, like, no more humans, I think they would bring back the humans anyways, just because of how the movie ends. I still, I think the humans are coming back regardless, which again, I don't, as long as you give them, right, give them the B story, Mini mitigate their roles, maybe ha right in this one, they come in once to save Sonic and Tails, and that's basically it. They, they have, they're, ba they're just a B story, they don't do that much, and that's fine. Right, give them a similar, like, mitigated role again. And, but yeah, definitely you need more. If you're doing Shadow the Hedgehog, you need to do more, obviously. Or whatever her name was. Oh gosh, introduce the little kid from the animated Sonic cartoon from, um, the early 2000s. See, see, I didn't watch Sat Sonic Sat AM as a kid. I watched the other one. The one with the little kid. And, you know, maybe introduce Amy or something like that. Sonic's girlfriend. I don't know. You can. I don't know. But yeah, what, at the end here, I really enjoyed it. it. It's a good, fun movie. You know, it's no high-class art or anything. But if you're a fan of Sonic, you will enjoy this. Right? Like, it's clear... Right? So many of these, like, video game adaptations are clearly embarrassed to be video game adaptations. Comic book movies were like that for the longest time. Comic book movies were very embarrassed to be comic book movies. Some of them still are. But I think you, you just gotta embrace it and have fun with it. And the song, and definitely this, the, the original one, again, kind of hit and miss. But the sequel does embrace it. They have fun with it. There clearly is a love for Sonic behind it. So, I enjoyed it. I did. I fully enjoyed it. Good, solid. I probably, again, I think I give the original like a, I don't know. I, I know I, I, I joked about like disagreeing with Rotten Tomatoes. I'd still probably give the original like a six or seven. And I'd probably give this new one a, se a seven or an eight. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's not perfect, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, will watching Sonic make me want to play Sonic? No. <laughs> because most of the games... Because most of the good Sonic games don't do story. Alright, like, the story is in the background. It's minimal. Right? With the exception of colors. Yeah, of the six Sonic games I like, the only one that really has a story is colors. Colors is real. Colors is some good fun, though. A mu Eggman creating amusement park? Good, solid fun. Oh, gosh, they should blow up the moon in the sequel. Oh, yeah, if, they're, if they really are going to do a sequel, they should totally blow up the moon in the sequel. Like they do in... I want to say Adventure 2, but it might have been the first one. God, I don't remember. It's been so long. Yeah, that's the, so that was the Sonic movie, the one I really enjoyed. Now let's talk about a movie that is amazing. One of the best movies I've seen in a while. Everything, everywhere, all at once. So I actually hadn't seen a trailer for this movie. I knew very little about it. I had just been told by some people I knew, right... That it's very good. It, that it was like one of the best movies in years. Right? They didn't tell me anything about it. They just told me it's one of the best movies in the uh, in like years. And I was like, uh, you know what? Sure. I, I've got some time. Yeah, this was yesterday. I, they told me about it like on Monday. 
because they went and saw an early screening and i was like oh okay you know what sure or I, they either saw an early screening or where they were it was out earlier but for me it came out on friday so yesterday and i was like yeah you know what sure let's do it and it's really good like holy shit i i just i guess as like a descriptor it's god damn it stop giving me freaking logic oh my god i'll give you the descriptor after i finish with i am so freaking tired of logic we have done this one so many times i am so done with this um i think this was cherry i'm so freaking tired of because i can't talk about anything when I'm trying to focus on logic. It's too distracting. Orange, grape, cherry. Orange, grape, cherry, banana. 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 Orange, grape, cherry. Okay, watermelon, watermelon, orange, banana, apple, watermelon, orange, banana, apple, watermelon, orange, banana, apple, orange, banana, apple, watermelon, orange, banana, apple, watermelon, orange, banana, apple. Oh, they were all right here. We qualified, yes. Okay, good. So yeah, um, so the basic movie is it's about Evelyn, who runs a dry cleaners with her husband, and she has a daughter. And she's in, like, in originally, right, she's not in a great position, and her husband is about to divorce her, and her daughter is, has come out as gay, and like she's kind of struggling to cope with that but she also doesn't like her father's come into town but she, and she doesn't want to tell her father so like her life is not going great right it's like, i would say it could be worse but it's not going great and she's in like big trouble with like taxes right like that's like one of the, early on they go to like a tax office because they're like trying to get their taxes in order and everything but then there's like this whole but then of course that's like the normal like part of the movie then it goes wild where, with like all these like alternate dimensions and like people are able to like travel through like alternate dimensions because an alternate dimension version of herself discovered like dimensional travel and that's all i'll say so right and like an alternate version of her husband comes in who knows like karate and whatnot and it just goes wild from there and I won't say anything else because it is one of the best movies. Like, I know I just recommended the Sonic movie. And you know what? If you got time, go see it. But I, even if you don't have time, go see Everywhere's Ever Everything Everywhere's All at Once. Holy shit, did I love this movie. And it's like, like, I compare it to like, okay, this, com if you've seen the movie I'm about to compare it to, this will make no sense. If you've seen Everything Everywhere is All at Once, this will make perfect sense. Or if, if, if you've seen every... Okay, so if you've seen both movies, this will make sense. If you've only seen one of these two movies, this will make no sense. The movie I would compare it to is the... I think it was 2018 Oscar-nominated Lady Bird. That is the movie I would compare it to. I think that's what it has most in common to. Lady Bird was about a mother and daughter and the daughter's about to go away to college. And you know, it's just the struggles between the mother and the... Oh my gosh, if you fall out, you're out. Oh, uh, that's some bullshit. But yeah, it's about a mother and daughter and the daughter's about to go away to college. And it's just the, the struggles between them as they try to work out through life. And it's really good. Lady Bird is a fantastic movie. And yeah, I it's the it's the closest thing I would compare everything everywhere all at once to. And I want to say everything everywhere all at once is better. Like I enjoyed this movie so much. It's so good. It's 
got it's it's both right it's got some good characters all the actors in it are great but it's got a good story it's got some good action right the action while not like super complicated or like super choreographed is still rather effective it's funny i was there is a scene where i was in tears laughing so hard and i can't say and i don't i don't even want to tell you where it is in the movie like there's one context clue that will totally give it away but it was so fucking good it was just so clever it's so interesting and yeah the multi the multiverse like stuff can get complicated and there was a moment where i was like uh, is this frying my brain like like a nolan movie but i don't think it ever gets as complicated as a nolan movie and it is it's again i compare it to Lady Bird because i think that's the good comparison because even though there's all this multiversal travel stuff that's the core that's what it all comes down to and it's really good is that got like some sort of like weird electrical pattern but yeah everything everywhere all at once for a movie i'd never even heard of a week ago i am so impressed with it. i'm so glad i sat down to take time out of my day to watch yeah no it's i don't know if it will because again it's coming out in this weird covid time where nothing can succeed at the box office unless you're a big triple a superhero movie to be fair my theater while not packed was actually had a, a good chunk of people in it but yeah if you have one movie to see right now go see this one holy shit it's so good i'm it's is it's probably the best thing i have seen since um parasite yeah because i don't have i seen because i don't think i've seen anything as good or at least like on par with parasite since parasite like i really liked coda that, that that apple tv movie that just won the oscar coda was really good i'd probably say this is better than coda even though i did really like coda as well like sir if you if you if you have apple tv and you haven't seen coda i'd recommend it really um if you don't have apple tv and you haven't seen coda i don't know if i'd go out of my way to see see it even though again it's really good but no i liked i i liked everything everywhere all at once just a really fun funny heartfelt entertaining movie i am so impressed with it oh my gosh so good i don't know why i keep doing that yeah so go go again if you have one thing to see ma make it this one and then maybe go see sonic as well because sonic was also good just not as good i don't it, we're, we're gonna have to hope for a bunch of people to get out if we're gonna make it through this but yeah that that's every story i have to talk about tonight yeah um i think we're good here yeah got yeah with three people we can't make enough points cherry watermelon cherry watermelon banana apple cherry watermelon banana apple. cherry watermelon banana apple. cherry watermelon banana a banooner i'm gonna put a banooner in your exhaust poop i'm so tired of this log like i know people always used to say it's the worst game and they did make it by adding the giant spinning bar they made it more interesting yeah watermelon cherry orange oh god uh, i had no idea yeah we're out literally every team is out except for one that i think does that does that get them all out except for one No, there were plenty of left. Okay, for some reason I thought we were lower down than we were. But yeah, I think that's all I got to talk about um, this week. Um, yeah, I've just I've just seen some really good movies, and I haven't played any videos games. There was no news. I've been dealing with phone troubles this week. Oh my gosh. 
You wouldn't even imagine, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to play some Tunic tomorrow. Hopefully, probably, maybe. Um, I would like to finish Kirby tomorrow. I, I don't I don't know if that will happen. I do not know if we will finish Kirby tomorrow. It might, it might not. Team Worlds? We never, we got, we got stupid, um, whatever, so many times. Logic, we never got a single team round. And you literally have to do everything to get uh, all this stuff. Wow. Wow. But yeah, um, when does this end? Oh, it ends tomorrow. Okay. But yeah, I I would like to get, I'd like to play Tunic tomorrow, but I also want to finish Kirby. Um, because there's gonna be even if we don't hundred percent it, there's only one stream left in that. You know, I gotta do the I gotta finish the True Arena, and maybe I do some other things. Like I want to. Right, just some other simple things. So I'd like to finish Kirby. But yeah, um, and if I don't do it on tomorrow, on Sunday, then I'll probably do it Friday. Because um, I have Friday, the university is closed on Friday, so I will probably do it Friday. Yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds good to me. So that's my plan at the moment, to do it, f or to, to try to do it tomorrow, but if not, we'll do it Friday. Other than that, my only other thing, is, the only other thing I, is that I've been, th I've been thinking a lot about Pokemon, mainly because I've been watching YouTube videos on Pokemon, like, instead of playing video games, I'm just watching videos about video games, you know, like, I've been watching, um, the eight player Super Mario Odyssey speedruns, they got sub 45 minutes. Holy crap. And I think it's possible for them to get sub 40. Like, it'd be very tight, but I think it's possible for them to get sub 40. Eventually. Maybe, I don't know, there's like 20 minutes of cutscenes and whatnot. So they'd be cutting it very close, but. It's just so... 8-player Super Mario Odyssey is so interesting. So, yeah. I, and I've been watching all that, and I still want to replay Mario Odyssey. But, yeah. I, instead of playing video games, I've been watching video games. And I've been thinking about playing Pokemon a lot recently. And I was like, God, do I finally do that uh, Sword and Shield Nuzlocke I was talking about? And see, the problem is I know I'm going to fail it. If I were to do a Pokemon Nuzlocke, I would fail a Pokemon Nuzlocke. Like, I, that is inevitable. So it's like, do I just play Sword and Shield legitimate? Like, just regularly? Like, that might just be... Like, do I just want... Because I am curious to do a Nuzlocke. I just know I'm going to fail. Because I'm not good enough to... Like, I like Pokemon. I've been playing it for 20 plus years. A what, 23? No, that's wrong. I, I think it's 22. I've been playing it a long time. Because what, the series is 25? Well, when did it come out in America? 98? Yeah, probably like 22 year, 22 something years. I've been playing Pokemon a long time is what I'm saying. It's It's been a long time. But even still, I don't think... Like, I'm not actually that good at the game. So I, I think I would fail a Nuzlocke. But if I were to do a Nuzlocke, I'd want to probably do it in the most recent game. But I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking about. Because I've been putting it off doing Pokemon. for Because we were going to do it last year, and then the Switch broke. So it's like, do I do it now? I don't know. It's, it's definitely something I'm thinking about. But we're going to finish Kirby either. We're going to finish Kirby at some point in the next week. So we shall see. But with that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.